Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott wyden Kivowitz. Welcome to episode 16. My name is Scott wyden Kivowitz, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rachel, from Photoscribe. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm ready for another episode. Um, last episode, we spoke with uh, Mark from Flow Themes, and that was a really cool conversation. Um, and everybody who is listening and watching learned a lot about, uh, you know, image sizes and things like that. And um, that was a really cool conversation. So Yeah, they really get to interact with a lot of photographers' websites, so to hear their insights about, you know, trends and things they've seen. I mean, no, it was a really great talk. Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited for today's episode. Today we have Brian Matias. Uh, he's a professional photographer and an author based in Portland, Oregon. And although he's originally a New Yorker, Brooklyn. and then and then <laughs> Massachusetts, and now Portland. So, and a, br a brief stint in California. A <laughs> brief stint in California. Nice. Yeah. Um, Brian specializes in landscape and travel photography, and he has spent the better part of a decade decade educating and inspiring photographers all around the world with his tutorials, videos, and stories. He is a partner with some of some, uh, some amazing photography and technology companies like Sony, Zeiss, G Technology, and of course, <laughs> Imagely. Imagely. What's so funny? What's so funny? I love the enthusiasm. No, it's a really nice cadence. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, so he has a uh, odd obsession with long exposure photography. Very odd. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think I do too. Um, neutral density filters, fisheye lenses, and now toys. Um, so where's your toy, Brian? Where's your toy? Oh, toys. Uh, <laughs> toys. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you guys toys. are listening instead of watching, we are getting some toy action on yes. the video. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Brian's passion in helping others uh, is helping others help themselves with their pursuits of photography. Um, Brian is also the husband of another incredible photographer and educator, Nicole S. Young, who we will also have on the show at some point in the future. Nice. That's like a power team right there. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so. uh, the power is mostly with her. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it should be. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Happy life, happy life. Right. Yes. Um, so before we get into what's going on with you, Brian, let's just talk a little bit about some WordPress photography-related news. Uh, this week we have, it's a little less on the photography side, more on the WordPress side, but uh, three small snippets of news, one being Automatic, the company behind WordPress.com and the main uh, development of uh, WordPress, the WordPress software, um, will soon have, uh, they will be their own registrar for .blog domains. Um, and those will be available for purchase exclusively through through um, Automatic originally. Um, we'll link. It's not actually from Automatic.com. It's from a sub another site. So we'll link to that in the show notes of where you can re um, reserve your .dot blog domain uh, today. Uh, have, they, the, uh, have they mentioned the pricing for that? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Um, they all they also opened for uh, other registrars to basically license the dot .black domain through them. So eventually it will also be available through, you know, hovers and stuff like that, um, Google domains and stuff. But it'll all be licensed through Automatic in the end, which is interesting. Um, now, for photographers, is this, I mean, because we, we always tell photographers that the best use of WordPress is to all be on one correct. domain. So to purchase, you know, such and such photography dot .blog, unless you're running an actual blog through it, may not Right. Be... Um, it, it may not be the best for photographers overall, but there are photographers who still continue to separate the uh, their, their website from their blog, and so yeah. in that case, maybe it's worth it. The yeah. other thing is just for having the security of having the domain. Yep. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I have, I have like, I don't know, 30 or so URLs that... All, all they do is focus, uh, not focus, forward to Matias.com. Right. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, so in, in that case, it's one of those things that might be worth investing in, depending on how much they price it. If it's $100 a year, it may not be worth right. it. You know, so if, is it something like where you buy the domain and then you can, you still have a, you can, you have a different hosting plan, right? So like Imagely or GoDaddy or... 
that is soon to be determined. Okay, um, all right. So we don't even know that yet. Awesome. We don't even know. Yeah, right now it's really just a landing page where you can reserve the the the, the you know your domain dot blog. So yeah, right. we'll see. Um, the next thing is uh, Caldera Forms. If you are using Caldera Forms, it's a a form plugin. There is a medium severity uh, security update. Um, so make sure it actually is as of today, which is May 24th, the time we're recording this. Um, they just released an update. Uh, they're saying it's medium severity. They didn't say specifically what it is, but update it if you are using Caldera Forms. Um, and the last bit is uh, WordPress 4.6 is already in development, and there's a bunch of things they're doing, but one of the uh, changes they're making is an accessibility improvement to the tag and category pages. For those who don't know what accessibility is, that means anybody who is uh, deaf or blind or have some sort of disability, they will be able to, uh, there'll, there'll be enhancements towards that on the tag and category screens specifically. I wonder how that's going to affect, <clears throat> excuse me, I wonder how that's going to affect SEO because I know, so if, if you have a disability, sometimes you can interact with the web differently using readers that will actually read the web pages. Um, and that's what the categories and tags were originally. Well, this created. is this is for the back end right now. This is right. So um, SEO wise, it wouldn't make a difference, um, only because it's only in your admin. It's not in the okay. not touching the front end yet. Okay. Because um, so. I know for photographers, categories and tags are the places where they put in those SEO keywords, even though the original intent of categories and tags were to be for the accessibility community to be able to access the web pages in a different way. If you can't see the images, but you can read the alt tags and, and the categories, that's what they're originally used for. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's the news. Um, Brian, what's going on in your side of the country? <laughs> uh, well, well, Scott, it's uh, a, a lovely, what is it, 56 degrees in the overcast skies. Nice. Nice. Um, no, it's, it's uh, things are things are photography wise. We're kind of winding, kind of starting to wind down the, at least in the gorge, the waterfall shooting because you know the temperature increases, rain decreases, and so the water flow I can tell is starting to go down. But um, more in my digital life, it, it pretty much for the past month or so has been focused on live streaming uh, with Facebook. And that's like, that's been monopolizing most of my time. I, I, I shouldn't be surprised at how um, time consuming it is, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it, I haven't been kind of this excited about something in a long time. Actually, not the, the, the action figures here that I'm going to be photographing is also <laughs> up there. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. Um, but yeah, the live streaming is has. I mean, it's nothing new, you know, with Periscope and Meerkat and stuff. But with Facebook, because of that social graph that they have, right? You know, the yeah, are... yeah. That was gonna be my question. You know, because it isn't brand new. But what what is it about it that excites you as a photography educator? Um, specifically. Uh, unlike Periscope or really anything except for YouTube Live, YouTube Live is the closest uh, comparable platform. With my YouTube or with my Facebook show, which is just called the Photo Show, um, I can leverage software and hardware that I, instead of just using my my mobile phone, which is currently what anyone can do. So with Facebook Live and Periscope, you can only do. Um, right. I can I can leverage um, my two Sony cameras. Have like a two camera setup with my wireless Sennheiser mic and graphical animations. Um, make it kind of like I modeled it after kind of the Daily Show, kind of the that kind of format very loosely. I mean, obviously I'm not a comedian and I don't have an entire staff of people producing. So um, yeah, I I. That's been that's the ability to use like these capture cards and my my A7 mirrorless cameras allows me to pr produce at a higher quality than yeah. most people. Yep. So and, how do you do the switching? Sorry, Scott. I mean, how do you? I didn't know Facebook had the ability to do 
that kind of technology? It doesn't. It's the, so the software I use is called Wirecast. And okay. If, you, uh, if you're familiar with an app called uh, ScreenFlow, yep. that's by the same company. And so Wirecast was one of the first people out of the gate. So for, at Facebook's F8 conference last month, um, I think it was last month, it was a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago, yeah, they opened up their API, their their uh, the real time messaging protocol API, uh, to third parties who allow, who basically they're allowing these third parties to publish streams. So it's not Facebook that's handling the camera switching and everything. It's this Wirecast software, and so I'm sitting there on camera and I'm doing the switching. Normally you have a producer or right, know, right, yeah, off <laughs> off screen who's doing everything. But it, I don't have that luxury, and I kind of like. At, at first, I was very self-conscious about it, like super self-conscious. Like if you start the first three episodes, one, I made a ton of just, fla uh, you know, bungles, <laughs> you know, not knowing the software because it was an evolution. It was like laboratory science is what I called it. I was learning on the fly. Great. And so there were times where I didn't set my audio correctly when I switched to graphic, and I'd lose audio and that kind of stuff. Um, but I've gotten pretty comfortable with it now, and like any, I guess, show, uh, the product is a rep is a reflection of the uh, preparation you put into it. So I always, before any show, I always have to go out and create the graphics and get you know all the assets ready and lay everything out and get the animation set, and um, and then there's the whole I have to do a, a prep video to my profile page saying, hey, we're going live in like 30 minutes. And it's, it's, it's a whole thing. Well, you've made it into a show. I mean, you really made it into a production quality versus what most people think of Facebook Live for as an impromptu sort of selfie session. But that's well, great as a solopreneur of photographers. I mean, it, it almost opens up these unlimited usage. It does, but here, so, well, first of all, had I known that all I needed to do was get a, a Chewbacca mask and just start <laughs> laughing, <laughs> I would have done what? that. Do you not love her? I love her. You know what? I uh, I watched that video. At first, I was like, what's going on? Like, And it wasn't until she started just, like, just that busting out laughing. Right. And then if you wait till the very end, she says, like, it's the simple things in life or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And that was... And then video ends, and I think that was such a great way to end the video. And totally, I mean, she, she was just on James, was it Condren? Yeah, Cold? Paul there. Um, yeah, the 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 um carpool karaoke type of yeah. thing. Yeah, if you guys don't know what we're talking about and you're listening to this, you need to Google Happy Chewbacca video. It just went viral, I think, this past week. So again, we're yeah. May twenty fourth here. Um, and it's she is she's making the circuit of like the li the morning shows and. She's just full of joy. You can't not laugh with, with her and yeah. enjoy life with her. <laughs> you, can, you can tell that it, it was 100% genuine. Like, oh, there yeah. was nothing phony about it. Uh, I think she was expecting, like, 10 people to watch mm -hmm. it. And uh, it's, it's now the most viewed Facebook Live video currently. It's, like, over 120 million views. Right. I mean, there are... I mean, Cable companies would slaughter their kids to have right. that kind of <laughs> Right, no, for sure. And again, she took that selfie style, what we were talking about, in, in not the production that you're talking about, but just sort of one person. But she made it um, genuine. I think that really is the best word for it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't about her, like, her day, per se. It wasn't about negativity. It was about just, like... Hey guys, I'm here. This is awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, did you see the follow-up video that Coles did? No. I saw that they sent her a bunch of stuff. They they I think they Facebook Live did. I don't know if they did or they just recorded and posted it, but um they actually went to her door and presented her with um a bunch of Star Wars toys, yeah. including um masks for her kids so her kids don't have to take hers. Confiscate. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> I love that. She's like, I got a confiscate. Yeah, um, and they also gave her like a whole bunch of um, Cole's gift cards, like five grand worth or some some yeah. you know, large amount like that, <clears throat> plus um, forty thousand Cole's rewards points and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And well, they should talk about free advertising. Exactly. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, and I think yeah. that's. 
that's a um, you know it's not specific to WordPress, but photographer businesses they should take something from that. The fact yeah. that someone is talking about their store in a video that a lot of people have seen, and um, they don't they didn't have to do that. They didn't right. have to give to her, but they took advantage of that that virality and um, and sort of just you know enhanced enhanced how how fun that was right and and sort of made themselves as a brand look good piggybacked on just a fun video oh absolutely um, so there's ways that photographers could do this if people are talking about their services um, whether it's just rewarding their that person with hey thanks for mentioning. Here's a here's yeah. a money off your next session or something like that. Well, I think right. anytime someone talks about your business in a positive way, whether it's Facebook Live, whether it's a review, whether, I mean, there is there's always usage to share, and I think that's sort of what ties Facebook Live in to WordPress or to the the reason that Periscope and Meerkat didn't really take off is because it doesn't have that sharing ability that Facebook Live does. Now, is there a functionality where you can share a Facebook Live on a WordPress blog? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, right there, there you go. Right? Yeah. You know, actually, one of the one of the topics I want to talk about um, was actually how Brian, you, and I know I know the answer here, but I, I want you to talk about how you're sharing this these videos on your website and why you're sharing them on your website uh, and what you do different on your website than than what you do on Facebook. Yeah, I'd be very interested in that too. Sure, yeah, and that's a, I mean, I knew you were going there, Scott, and <laughs> it, this is actually, so there's a lot of, um, I guess, um, what's the word, dimensions, or, what, I, I, I am conflicted in a lot of ways. So let's start just with the simple broadcast itself before we even get to the archive. Um, so right now, my profile, my, my Facebook profile, has like it has like 262,000 followers. Great, happy, you know, whatever. My page, which is currently where I broadcast my show to, um, that has a, just like 4,600 followers, or no, 4,200 followers. And the reason why I'm so kind of I've been so adamant about going to the page is because that's you know the page gives you more robust metrics, it gives you the ability to boost posts, right. it gives, and, and Facebook, you know, they're, they're quite clear that, you know, I'm doing these live videos to promote my brand, and my brand is not, I mean, technically it's an individual, it's a person, but I consider myself, I'm incorporated, like I have, you know, Matias Incorporated, and so like I'm a company. Right, you are your business, you are your brand. I am, my, exactly. So, so the first thing, Scott, was like, yeah, I, I kind of wasn't sure should I be publishing to my profile because it has, in theory, a much larger audience, but then, you know, it's subject to Facebook's algorithm, yada, yada. I ended up going with the page because I want to, I'm trying to grow it organically, but I am also boosting some of the, 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 the episodes that I was, I'm really happy with, like the outcome or, you know, the, the quality of it, I'm boosting those. Like, I'll do like $5 a day in Facebook ads. Um, so to your question, Scott, in terms of after, so here's what here's how it works. Wirecast um, has multiple output methods. So one of the output methods is Facebook Live, and it uses the real-time messaging protocol. Facebook limits a maximum resolution of 720p. That's just the way. That's their thing. It's not. It's not on the user end. And that's all well and good to a degree. Um, it's enough to it's high enough quality to watch on the, you know, streaming on your mobile phone, and then it kind of you know you get it goes. You start to kind of get this um, decline as you view it on higher resolution displays. Right. Fine. To mitigate that, though, um, you can also uh, Wirecast allows you to record simultaneously locally. So while I'm streaming, I'm also recording locally at 1080p. Oh wow! Um, and that's also you know it's the audio is um, it's not it doesn't have to be compressed over um, over Facebook. So yes, the, so the audio sounds better as well as the video looking better. Exactly. And so when I take I take that um, that uh, f recorded file 
I open it up immediately to ScreenFlow and I shave off the five minute countdown timer that I use. Um, uh, that I, you know, when when I go live, I, the, when, the first couple episodes when I went live, I got feedback that like, you know, hey, I saw you went live, but you're already like a few minutes into the show when I got in. So I built a countdown timer in After Effects, and basically, if the show starts at three o'clock, the countdown, the five minute countdown starts at three. So at three o five, I cue my bumper, which is um, nine so seconds long, and then yep. I go into the show. And so I, I for the recording. On you, that I post to YouTube, I want to shave that off. Facebook, I, you can't edit a video on Facebook, and you can't replace a video. So that's good to know. Yeah. So if you look at my countdown timer, below the count, the clock itself, it says, "If you're viewing replay, skip past this timer," because I want people to know. The other thing that I do with the countdown timer is I set the opacity to about seventy percent, so that below the countdown timer, I have the main my main camera feed, so you can see me. You can see that there's something going on. It's not just a static countdown timer. Right. So, um, so again, back to Scott's point. Um, I take that that 1080p file and I upload it to YouTube. And um, when the when it's uploaded and it's processed, I create a blog post on my on my WordPress blog and I embed the YouTube video. Right. And I allow it there. So, I another conflict I have is. So, for instance, this morning I sent out an, uh, a newsletter, uh, my, my e-news to my audience. And I was really, um, I, I, I'm always torn because I don't know whether I should push them to the po- the Facebook post, right. which, which gives me a higher view count. And in theory, I don't know if that's going to help with Facebook algorithm. Or do I send them to my post on my website, which gives my blog higher session count also increases my YouTube view count. Um, so I'm really, uh, one is more self-serving. If I, I feel if I send them to Facebook, that's self-serving because I'm giving them a knowingly lesser quality video. Right. But, but you know, the bottom line is this is, I, I build this, the way I build this show is it's the first Facebook live show focused on photography and video. So there's a, there's a lot of minor discrepancies, I guess, or things that I'm really kind of trying to rationalize. Right. I wonder if, if you reach out to Facebook, if they'll start to... I mean, so this is the only situation so far on social media where you don't start your social media at WordPress and then share it on Facebook. Correct you're starting it on Facebook and then you're sharing it through the methods you talked about YouTube and exporting in a different DPI on your WordPress. So well, actually to, to, let me touch on that though. Yeah, Rachel, that's a fair point. So you asked this question. The fir- before this whole setup before they open up their API, I w- what I would do is I would take I would do my live show. It wasn't even the live show. It was it were like they were like video segments. I would record them on my phone. Um and I use uh, Reflector, which is a Mac app, and essentially allows me to mirror um, my iPhone display. And the reason why I did that is because I would broadcast using the rear camera. Which right. The display was I couldn't see it, so I'd, I'd use Reflector on my display. You know, here's the here's the phone, and I'd use Reflector to make sure I'm composed <laughs> properly. And with Facebook Live, when you record on the phone, there's a a switch that says save local copy. That's actually not the point. The point is what I would when the arc when the post was done, the live stream was done, and the post and the video was there. There are Facebook plugins that, or it's like short codes, I think, that allow that will embed the Facebook video in a blog post. Okay, so you can do it that way. What you're sacrificing then, though, is the image quality. Correct. Yeah. And, the, and audio the, quality. The resolution. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. overall experience. Um, so you know some of the advantages of of having the content on your blog um, are branding. You know it's on your website. People are there. They can navigate to other content, subscribe to your email list, and so on. Buy an ebook, buy presets, whatever. Um, you also have the chance for link building. So for example, um, we're going to be linking to your uh, you know one of your episodes. In fact, I think one of the ones I want to link to in the show notes is 
um, how you're actually the video where you talk about how you're actually doing it, where you show the equipment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a link, right? So that's helping your SEO because now you have us linking to your site. You can get. You're going to have other. You know. Um, uh, you know, Resource Magazine might pick up the fact that you're doing the first Facebook photo show, right? There's some more link building from a great media website, you know, so you're, you're going to wind up getting more and more of that, which in turn will help you more than just having it on Facebook, <coughs> only, right? Because, sure. because now you have, um, you're building up your SEO for your entire site, but also you, you also increase the chances of getting more people on your email list, which is far more important than just a Facebook like. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and, and yeah, and in talk, so it's funny. I'll have these kinds of conversations, and I'll start to second guess myself because now I'm like, well, should I do the best of both worlds? Meaning, create the post on my website, but embed from Facebook instead of YouTube, um, and just kind of like let YouTube get its views organically on YouTube through my subscribers there, um, because I feel like I'm running two races at the same time like uh, like I really should be focused on either bolstering my Facebook view count or my YouTube view count well I think uh, you're one of the first ones so it's sort of like you're the test case you I, know I, I I guess so yeah and I'm happy to do it I just I might I I know, I don't know that there's a right answer. I think that this discussion is, and in my head, what I see the discussion going, again, is SEO, like, where do you want the traffic? What is more important to you? Yes, like, we always say from a WordPress point of view that you do want all this traffic back to your blog, back to your website, because it translates into other things like link building and email list building. Right. But some of the questions that I get as a blogger um, is, well, we're on Facebook, all of our clients are on Facebook, why do we even care about the blog anymore, you know? And obviously my answer is because you own the blog, it is a place for link building, it is like all those things we discuss, but in this situation where you're talking about Facebook Live specifically, what is more important? Is it the Facebook likes or is it the link building or is it just so putting out great content, you it, know? To, to me, the fact that you can build up an email list by getting people to go to the site right? Um, and you can, you know, Brian already has a really great. Um, is it weekly at, right now? You have a uh, weekly it, email, or it, so. No, it's funny. Um, it, it's I made I did a survey monkey poll a while back, and I asked mm. people what what's the frequency they would prefer. And this one guy, he did like other, and the, and you know qualified it by saying, whenever you have something to say. Right. Right. And so yeah. So it's it, not really it's not really on a schedule. It's it's five to ten days, I would say, or seven to ten so, day frequency. So, and you're already putting out a lot of content, great content in the email that you send out. And um, to be able to push people to the live stream, to be able to interact with you live. Yeah, that's is, right. So that that's one thing. So you're 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 building up your email list, and then you're able to send them to Facebook through the email list. But the other advantage is, when you do the Facebook ads, you can actually target your email list. Right. Specifically. So, right. at the same time, you can get people to like it by them subscribing to your email list or your website. So for people okay. listening who are photographers and may not know that technology, Scott, how w can you walk someone through the Facebook linking to your email list? So um, Facebook has a section called audience, audiences, I think. Um, and when you create an audience, you have the ability to, if you use MailChimp, you can actually link, um, basically uh, authorize Facebook to access your MailChimp account and it'll automatically import your MailChimp list. That's Don't you have to pay? Isn't that an additional fee with MailChimp, though? N uh, as long as you're a paying customer, not a free customer, then they, they give you access to the API. Yeah, I oh, think you have to be at the paying level on MailChimp yeah. versus yeah, the which, free level. Oh, I thought there was... Wasn't there a... Like a... I thought there was an additional service called like social social profiles. I think that's something like that. That's um actually in their reports for your uh, yeah. Okay, never so mind. That, that yeah that tells you the the interactivity of that um list member in the report. Got it. So um so if you don't use Mailchimp, if you use um you know Aweber or something like that, uh you could actually export a CSV file of your list and upload that into Facebook's audiences. 
and it'll do the same thing as the Mailchimp in Auto One would do, where awesome. it just it looks at the email addresses, correlates the Facebook account to those email addresses, um, and then you can save that as an audience and target that audience specifically in your ads. And we should say, I mean, because it's a WordPress podcast, that Facebook has that functionality of the audience building. But when you use these tools like MailChimp in conjunction with both WordPress and Facebook, so WordPress you can pull in the addresses, and then Facebook you can target the addresses. I mean, you really can create a complete circle of engagement. Uh, I don't even know the right business words parts of it, you know, but they're really all these things work in conjunction with each other. So it's not just Facebook, just MailChimp, just WordPress, but right. all together, you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the beauty of APIs. Is yeah. In, as long as you so yep um, so in previous episodes we've talked about the, the idea of podcasting or doing webinars or and now live streaming for clients right and there's two there's two approaches approaches to this one being what you're doing which is photo education so your clients are photographers right so uh, the idea of you doing a podcast like this or a webinar or your Facebook live um, live show that's super beneficial, right? I hope so. Yes, um, <laughs> and and it's it's doing really well already. Um, but there's another idea of doing it to uh, clients who pay you. Not I'm not talking f to photographers. I'm talking to you know uh, the the mom who wants family photos, right? Right. And we talked to Brian Caparici about uh, podcasting for clients. Uh, we who do we I forgot who we talked to about webinars for clients. Um, you know, what's your view on, I know you don't have, you don't really do much as far as, like, the uh, consumer level. At, um, Weddings you know, and portraits, clients. you do more. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're more of a, a B2B as far as, far as your, your business, your photo business goes, but what's your take on doing any of those to B2C clients? Well, I mean... And there may there may not be you know if there's if you don't see a benefit that's that's fine that's just you and know. that's where we got with the podcasting because it was audio based right but this is video based so I, yeah what, what do you I mean, think <laughs> I mean I, I, well to me I I do this primarily just to um, build mind share to my brand and I don't think that what I do is uh, should is is kind of like unique just to you know me or to B two B type of uh, business, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is I'm just looking at trends and I'm looking that I, I know that video, first of all, just video has been booming. I mean, and especially yep. consumption on mobile has been booming. Yep. Um, and then just, it doesn't take a, you know, a, a genius to see how much effort Facebook is putting into live streaming. So you combine the two together with a little bit of um, elbow grease you know, and a little bit of money because, like, Wirecast was 500 bucks, and yep. the hardware, if you don't already have the hardware, you, you know, fortunately I have, I had the, the hardware ready. It's thousands of dollars. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be. But yeah, it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't right. have to be. But, again, I, when I do something that, is, for instance, I'm going to be putting a lot of time into. I want to make sure I do it right. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be right out of the gate. Like I said, first couple of episodes, there have been some, I mean, they're almost like a blooper reel. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I like taking, I'm a big fan of taking my audience on the, on a journey. What I, I think, the only, I guess, mistake for someone who's doing things at a, you know, like a, a wedding or portrait kind of photography business is, is to not do anything. Yeah. Right. You want to try to do something that uh, will make you stand out. Which is, not. I mean, totally easier said than done. Here's right. the thing. Oh, yeah. Bottom line, and this is my kind of how I approach everything I do is the most valuable thing that someone can give me is their time. And if, they're give, if you're giving me your time, then I owe it to you to give you the best that I can. Meaning yeah. some something worthwhile, which is why when I first started the show, actually, I did it daily. I said it, I'm like, Monday through Friday. 
And after like four episodes, I, I completely fizzled out because I'm like, it's I a saw lot. The, it, it's, it was intense. Yeah. It, it, for, it, it's a good thing you didn't name the show the Daily Photo Show. <laughs> and and I, you're so right because I yeah. looked back at the post and never I didn't I never referenced it as the first Daily Facebook Live show. So I well, was like, oh, cool, you know, I have a kind of a reprieve, and I'm setting a goal to do every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's a bit more sustainable. But if I don't have, what's that? Still a lot of work. It's a lot yeah. of work. And if tomorrow, Wednesday, comes around and I don't feel like I have enough for a show, there's not going to be a show. Right. right. But, right. yeah, like, it's not... The other thing is I still haven't nailed down... No two... I, I, every show has been a different time so far. And that's something I want to fix because I'm experimenting to see is there a particular time of day. Right. Yeah, and I, I, so when you're looking at this, this is another thing for, for everybody listening or watching... You're looking at the uh, your insights, right? Your Facebook oh, yeah. insights, yeah. and it actually tells you. It can tell you um, when people are um, on Facebook, when your the people who like your page are on Facebook, and this this goes back to what you were saying originally. How your all those two hundred thousand followers you have for your personal profile, you get no analytics. Correct. Yeah. But you do on the page, so it, that's why you need to. You, or you're you're trying hard to push people from your personal followers to your Facebook likes, so you can get two hundred thousand people worth of data instead of four thousand. Right, and right. the data is so clear in terms yeah. of the Facebook stuff. But and, and they're they're even growing the the video data now that video's so big on Facebook. You're getting more and more analytics as far as the video is specifically goes. Totally. So I do see a, an application for wedding and portrait photographers, not necessarily like I don't know that I would tell a wedding photographer to go out on the day of someone's wedding, but setting up a styled shoot and letting you know clients know what your the experience is with you as the photographer, or you know doing a family shoot um, with clients that aren't you know that are doing it for yeah. trade. I mean. I do see Facebook Live as because it also has the archive capabilities yep. that you mentioned. Yep. So I think more than both the podcast and the webinars, this is definitely a new avenue for photographers to explore for their clients too. More than anything, I think we've talked about. Yep. And yeah, and it may it may not work for majority of photographers, but right. you know, try fail try. Right. Yeah. right. Listen, you know, the the there there are certain. Um, variables that that you have to be very comfortable with uh, that aren't present in something like a well I guess a webinar is live um, but you have to you know be really comfortable with presenting yourself but also even more importantly how you handle when something messes up which right. invariably will mess up. Yep. Yeah, I feel like Facebook Live is a lot easier. And I know you said, you know, the Wirecast and the, I mean, you're taking it definitely to a next yeah. level with production-wise. <laughs> and I think that's great because I think there are people who are listening or, that are going to want to emulate that and love that. I mean, I come from a TV production background. So to me, like, this is total geek out stuff. It but, reminds me of, like, a, a, the, the, the interface reminds me as if I was a, a, a newscast producer. Yeah, like, you know, and you can do graphic. that in your house, right? That's awesome. Yeah, I do it right here. I mean, here, look, I mean, for those, this is the setup. Um, so there is the main camera. So it's on a video tripod. The camera's behind a, a teleprompter. Yep, um, wow. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then I have a little uh, Atomos Ninja Assassin, because I, I can't see the composition. So the it's a, right. that's a monitor there. And then right there is my side camera. And then I've got these... LED banks with, with, with a Puffs Plus diffuser. Nice. Yeah, so, I mean, so. you really have a professional setup, and you've you've taken the Facebook Live to the next level, but, I mean, a photographer could do this with their phone and being yeah. out in the field and have an assistant yeah. holding it and talking at the same time. And so to be able to do both super high-quality production level and then super, and I'm not calling it low production level, but, like, ease of production level, you don't have to have a degree in television production to do it. Right. I think that it opens it up to everybody. And then the archival properties, the fact that you can bring it back to uh, WordPress, whether or not you use the YouTube or the 1080, it, you know, those discussions aside, the fact that you can do it makes all the difference. Because I, I don't, I just, we're, we're always on this cutting edge of stuff. And I, I see this as an application that a lot of photographers can use 
to their audiences of people who want their pictures taken. Yep. Um, before we move on, uh, the last thing I want to say about this is, um, and Brian touched on this, um, is if you're going to attempt this, um, and you're going to go the route that Brian did with Wirecaster, or Wirecast, um, it's easier with a team to produce it than yeah. it is to manage it by yourself. <laughs> but, oh <my> God, yeah. <laughs> but it is manageable by yourself. Is Wirecast yeah. Mac only? Because nope. I know ScreenFlow is, right? Yep. No, this is, it's cross-platform. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I think, do you want to move into um, our next section is usually guest recommended WordPress plugins and or themes. So yes. you know, we talked a lot about Facebook, um, but how do you use WordPress? And what do you use in WordPress that you would recommend to other people? Totally. Um, so currently my site is built upon the theme is, is X-Theme. But, um, you know, and... and Scott has actually helped me quite a bit just over the years. Mm -hmm. um, the one plugin, though, that from a so from a photographer's perspective, the one plugin and Scott knows this that I am pretty adamant about is uh, Foobox, and it's a uh, it's a third party Lightbox app, but it's in my opinion one of the most elegant ones. Is uh, it F O O? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Foobox. Um, but. And I, I just like the way, I like the way where the animation uh, that it uh, has when you open up a photo in Lightbox. For me, the the number one requirement for my website is every single image has to open up in the Lightbox. The featured image, uh, any image embedded in the post. Um, and I also like it because when the Lightbox opens up, if you hover over it, you get these little. Um, share intent icon so you can share to Facebook like right there. Right from the light box. Yep. And then but in terms of a plugin that I, I really um I just got into and, and actually talked about it on my show yesterday. Um it's called uh let me actually get the uh the I'm going to my plugins page because the you can customize the with the name in the sidebar of WordPress. It is called uh, mini orange two-factor authentication. Mini orange. Yeah. And so, yeah. Curious. Mini... Um, I'm curious about it. And uh, aside from, because I've I've never heard of that one. I'm curious what a uh, little bit of, if you can tell us a little, little bit about it, but also why you went with that instead of the Google authentication. Um. So mini orange. Yeah. I mean, I went to through mini orange because it's it's. One, it was very highly rated, and when I did a, a Google search for two-factor authentication plugins, I think that was the, the number one. Um, we should probably stop and say what is two-factor authentication sure. before. So two-factor authentication is a concept, a security concept of combining something you know with something you have. So when you log on, uh, when you log into any account with two-factor authentication, the, the something you know part is your password. You know your password. Yeah. The second factor is something you have, which is typically your phone. So when you have an account that is uh, enabled for two-factor authentication, once you enter your username and password, um, you have a second prompt to enter in a PIN, or six, usually a six-digit PIN. Um, and that is the second factor. And it's sent okay. to your, your phone or your tablet, whatever you have authenticated. Um, and that basically means that if your password, if someone hacks your password, unless they also have your phone and they can get into your phone, they can't continue the login process. Right. So it's really the one of the most secure ways that out there right now. Yes. Right. I mean, it's it's and and the, the what's important to know is that every 20 seconds that pin code gets uh, uh, changed based right. on a a specific kind of timing algorithm that's unique to the device. So, are, are you use so there's a I, I'm just looking in the plugin directory. I, there's a bunch of them. Are you using the the Google Authenticator Mini Orange plugin or a different one? So it's just called, it's the Mini Orange plugin, and and I actually pay the premium, and that actually allows you to have to choose what kind of authenticator you want. So I do have, within the if you want, I can share my screen and show you. Sure. I am. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um. <laughs> so let me just go. Where's my Hangout window? Actually, let me make sure I don't show up the, my API and token keys. Right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, 
So, for, uh, sorry for anyone who is listening. Just pretend you're viewing my screen. Or watch the video on the show page. <laughs> or, or do that. So, here is um, what it looks like. And you can see there are a, a variety of different options to uh, for your second factor authentication. You can have it send you an email. You can do OTP, which is um, uh, over uh, the text message, meaning you'll get the passcode. Of, uh, instead of using an app, you can use a text message. You can get push, push notifications to your phone. So I use, it's actually a combination of these two options. It's a Google Authenticator, but I use the Authy the app. Um, so Scott mentioned Google Authenticator. And Google Authenticator is, um, let me just, I'll oh, end screen share. How do I, oh, there we go, Scott, share. All right, so <clears throat> Google Authenticator is an app by Google that essentially supports two-factor authentication. So when you go to any sort of account that supports it, typically what will happen is when you go to enable it, it'll display a barcode, like a, a QR code. And in Google Authenticator on your phone, you hit add account, and then it brings up, it, it says scan barcode, which brings up your camera. You point it at the barcode, boom, done. Um, the problem is with Google Authenticator, it'll only work on one device. So right. if you have your phone and you go to your tablet and you log onto your Google account that's two-factor enabled, you have to get your phone and get the code. And that was frustrating to me because I often switch between iPhone and Android and my tablets and stuff. And it, it, it was it's a champagne problem. But the solution is an app called Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. And what that allows you to do is create an account with Authy, a secured account. And you're essentially letting Authy centralize the, the, the kind of timing for the for that uh, pin code. So are these both premium, Mini Orange and Authy? Authy's free, okay. uh, uh, um, and well, the app is free, and then Mini Orange to get the f options that you'll want. Um, it's premium, but it's a nominal fee. Like one of the options was I I only wanted administrator accounts on to, to require to use two factor. I didn't want to have to make my users do it. So right. premium gives you that kind of granular option to deselect those. Or to select which account types. So, like, if I ever have editors on this on the site, they'll definitely need to have two factor. Right. Um, so it's kind of like a you know a sysadmin uh, feature for your site. And Authy, I would assume, fixes the problem. My problem with two uh, factor authentication is I have a four year old, and that phone gets dropped in water, <laughs> and you're done with your site. So you know, like, he's four; it's not his fault. But now my business is shut out. So yep. does Authy fix that part of the equation. Absolutely, yeah. Because what you would do is you'd install it on your tablet, for example, and uh, you log in with your Authy account, which ideally you're using a secure password. Yep. Which all my passwords are stored in one password. Um, but uh, the what's my point? What's my point? Oh, my point is that you, you have your tablet, you launch the app, and there are your codes. Okay. Um, so it's it's kind of like a double fail safe. Um, um Brian, it, I don't know if they're gonna throw a bone into your process, uh, <laughs> but one password can also do um Google Authenticator in it. I didn't know that. And that syncs between devices as well. Oh my God! Are you serious? Yeah, and that actually would, um, in theory, solve your your paying for Mini Orange plus having Authy, because you can just use the regular Google Authenticator and then use One Password to have it, you know, all across your devices. Wait, so so there's a Google Authenticator plugin for WordPress? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can. We learn. <laughs> Um, so I'll, I'll I'll link to that one as well. Wait, who's, who's who's who publishes it? Uh, let me double check real quick. WordPress. Oh, I didn't know that one password does two factor. Yeah. So I'll tell you uh, straight up. I'm a WordPress whore. I mean, not a WordPress. <laughs> uh, a one password whore. Oh yeah, I love it. I was like, well, we are too. This is a WordPress <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we really like WordPress. <laughs> um. So. There's a bunch of Google Authenticator plugins. Um, the one that has the most active installs. Um, Which one do you use, Scott? Do you use one on your? Site? I do. I do not. I use. Um, uh, I, I use a security plugin that prevents logins. Plus, Imagely has 
um, security on the hosting level. Yeah. So, I mean, as with so many things in WordPress, there's you know a couple different ways to do sort of the same thing, and it really depends on your level of how secure you want it. Have you been hacked? I know a lot of people that have been hacked in the past are more into the security. Yeah. But I do caution, if you haven't been hacked, you probably want to be more into the security so that you're not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, this is one of those things that is a, a no-brainer. Right. You know, the extra step that you have to take. Oh, my yeah. God, what passwords? The latest Mac update brings two-factor support. Yep, and it's on the phone and, and iPad and it's well, One password is awesome. Well, yeah. and I think a lot of the questions that I get is, well, I'm just a photographer in so-and-so town. Why would anyone want to hack me? And I think it's not – the important thing is it's not about – who you are, or what your business is. Unfortunately, it's it's more about what server you're on and who's looking at what. You know. Yeah. So so getting hacked isn't just about your own vulnerabilities. It's about um, if your if your host gets hacked, or if you're on a shared host and another site on that server gets hacked, you're now vulnerable. So. Right. Um, and in those cases, if you don't have a backup, and you know, even if it has nothing to do with you. You're you're done for that time period. That's why backups are so important, and making sure that these security things are in place before you know. In, you might think you've done everything right, but you just want to make sure that you have all those bases covered. Yep. Yeah, that the, I don't get that at all. And being like, it almost gets me. Get what? That people don't have their sites secure? Yeah, that, well, that like, oh, well, I'm the small, well, who care, you know, I don't right. have it. No, like, that's no excuse. Like, you have a lock on your door. And right. and so so this was the episode I covered yesterday. Is like, forget about your website. Like, think about all the things you probably have on your photos synced or, you know. And I did a list. Like, I have, I think, like. 15 services, like core services, all of them support two-factor. No one knows about them. And yeah. I didn't even realize, just yesterday, right before the show, I realized that 500px, which is a photo sharing right. site, they support two-factor. Yep. In some cases, in some ways, they call it uh, enhanced security. They don't necessarily call it two-factor. But Twitter, Instagram, MailChimp, uh, Shopify, um, all of them. And, and MailChimp, you get a discount if you use it. I did not know that. I didn't yeah. know that either. That's interesting. Yeah, I think they give you, I want to say it's 10%. I could be wrong, but you get a nice discount if you use two-factor with them. Well, wow. I think back to the analogy about if you had, you know, you lock your front door. What if you had a storefront? Your website is your storefront. Wouldn't right. you lock your storefront in case, that you know, there's money in the cash register? You know, it's the same uh, concept, just in a different world in a different way. But yep. And I do sure. understand, because for photographers, they have to think about the shooting and the cameras and the technology there, and then to go over and think about the websites and the WordPress and the themes, and, you know, it's just... But the nice thing is, is that WordPress does try and make it as easy as possible. Yep. Um, so, uh, all right. Um, so I know I just threw a bone into the mix, Brian. Um, I know now you're going to... Now you're gonna reevaluate. There's nothing. No, no, no. It's happening. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the, you, you I, like one password is my jam. Yeah, I love it. And yeah. clearly, I haven't been jamming with it enough. Because <laughs> um, the first time I added a, a two factor to one password, I was a little confused, and now it's like, oh, that's easy. So it'll take you, a, a, I think, one or two tries before you really get the hang of it. Because they didn't I'm make it like it. it's not like adding a secure note. To one password, it's a little bit more in depth. Uh, and we could say one password is outside of WordPress. Yes, yes, it yes, is a separate yes, application, yes. but it's great because you can use it for all, literally all of your passwords in anything that you use on your computer. So yep. correct and, and very secure. Basically, I um, it, you know, what it works on a secure database, and that database I have it set to Dropbox. So the yeah, the first thing I do if I build a new first thing. Well, first I log into Apple, my Apple ID for for iCloud. Second, I log into um, Google for Chrome, and then the third mm -hmm. thing is I download and install Dropbox. And when you first launch one password, you can tell it, it. It asks if you have an existing database and where, and you say, and it Dropbox is an option, and boom, everything's there. Yep. So you're saying with like a brand new computer out of the box. You're oh, all totally linked in. Yep. 
LinkedIn, I, but totally like everything's already customized because of these things you have in place. That's correct. Um, awesome. I do I do kind of wish that they supported Drive Sync, um, Google Drive, because I just like two weeks ago I, I migrated from Dro Dropbox to Drive because I don't know why. I think you get more space <laughs> for less money, right? Yeah, I mean it's it, well it's not even the space per se. It's um, Oh, I remember what it was. I know what it was. It was a camel, straw broke the camel's back. I was in Word and um, typing a document up. And in the latest version of, of Office for Mac, Office 13 or whatever, 15, there's a little Dropbox icon on the right. right. So I typed this post for, for Zeiss, a guest post. I hit the button and I do the share with thing and I type in the title and I send it to her. The oh, And then the link is sent to her. I quit, I go away. She comes back to me and she's like, the link goes to 404. And so you, my assumption, the freaking rational assumption, was that when you generate the link and set the document name, that it saves the document you know, in Dropbox. And no, no such thing. The wow. document was... So after that, I was like, I'm done. I will only use Office if a document is presented to me that I need to open. But in other words, I'm using... Google Docs, Google, yeah. Google, Google Docs yeah. can open a Word document too. So right. exactly. yeah. no, Their functionality is amazing. Well, so we've talked about, oh my gosh, I feel like everything, <laughs> Facebook, WordPress, 1Password, yeah. Docs, Dropbox, but um, is there anything else that you kind of want to end on or close on? Um, I mean, just don't, don't be lackadaisical about your security. Just Ooh, that's a good quote. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be lackadaisical. Lackadaisical. Lack, caca lackadaisical. Nice. About your security. And try out Facebook Live and check out your... So where can we find you on the web? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe that's a good way to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I need to... I, my, my marketing director needs to punch me in the face. <laughs> um, uh, so my website is just my last name. It's matiash.com. M A T I A S H, but I also have I got the photo dot show. So speaking of earlier, we were talking about kind of uh, vanity top level domains. Nice. Yeah, I got the photo dot show, um, and I think right now actually I'm not even sure. This is how. Is that is that is that a forward or is that um, going to a new site that you've created? It's currently going to a. 404 because I need to go to Google. I use Google domains to manage all of my domains. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just go there. And so I was surprised that Google had, because I'm doing everything in my power to leave, to get all my domains out of GoDaddy because mm -hmm. they're just gross. Um, I have the photo show.net, so forward. Oh, I'm not forwarding it. Crap. All right, so <laughs> here's, okay, here's a, per I know we're kind of running late, Rachel. I apologize. Um, but this is another okay. thing. Like, do I? I can forward the photo dot show to the category URL. Right. Because every every photo mm -hmm. show episode is dot is a the photo show category. So do I bring it to my site or do I bring it to Facebook? I think to bring it to my site. Yeah, I would. I would. Yeah. I think so, they have more functionality there. Yeah. So now I have to find that um, that category and yeah. So anyway, sorry to. By the time you, <laughs> right. this, this episode is, is uh, broadcast, if you go to, to the photo dot show, that will give you access to all of the uh, high re uh, high definition archive episodes. Yep. And if you want to see, if you, I'd love for you to participate live. Just like my page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Brian Matias. Awesome. Awesome. Yep, we will definitely be linking to those in the show notes. Yep. Um, so thank you, Brian, for joining us today. And thank you, Rachel, for being an awesome co-host. Thank you, Scott. Um, you can find the show notes uh, from today's episode at imagely.com slash podcast slash 16. 16? Yes. So until next time. Bye. You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast.